Hello everybody, welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Master Quest. On the last episode we explored further into the Fire Temple and beat a bunch of Lizalfos. And on this episode, we are going to be... Well, I know we have to go through that door. There's a wall of fire going to be chasing us. Those torches are probably going to get lit by the wall of fire. So... There isn't even a wall of fire this dungeon kind of is lame all right now let's see what can I do here okay well I can hit that chest easily or I can get that chest easily I guess just need the hook shot in the right place I think this is gonna take me somewhere unfavorable yep Okay, well there's no way in there. If I fall down here, I fall down to the first room where the boss room is, and I don't want to do that yet. Okay. So don't do that. What I just did just makes me go around in a big circle. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to use Din's fire on these torches then. Well then again, that's these torches won't lit but light by Din's fire. I just remembered that. Because they're blue. Or they're gold. Gold torches don't light light away. Only the black ones do. So if I do this. There we have a blue box, so that must mean it means or a blue switch, which means it needs to be held down by a chest. That lit them. Good. And I didn't destroy this box here because I figured I would need to get back up. Lighting those hopefully unlocked the door, which it didn't. But it did something. What is the significance of having lit torches here? What does it allow me to do that I couldn't do if they weren't lit? Okay, there's a torch randomly sticking out of the ceiling. I guess that's my answer. Hmm. So I guess hit it with an arrow would be the best. Oh, wonderful. This dungeon really has some really misplaced things. Or not misplaced, but oddly placed things. Like that torch sticking out of the wall. And you would have never known it was there if that wasn't there if there wasn't it for that other lit torch there. Okay, so let's go ahead and knock this down. And actually this should be all I need to do. Look at that, I can fight the boss right now. So, I guess we're done the fire temple. That was convenient, and it also cut out like two thirds of the temple. Or, I guess, a third of the temple. Because the rest of the temple is basically going to get the Megaton Hammer. Which we already got, so no need for it. But still, I'm really surprised that they just kind of had all this stuff in that room and then, oh, you just need to hit this and that's it. So, Subterranean Lava Dragon, Volvagia. Now, this is the King Dodongo of the Adult Temple, or Adult Link Temples. Basically what we need to do is when he comes out, smack him on the head with the Megaton Hammer, and then come up and hit him with your sword. Now you can hit him in the face with an arrow when he flies up and that deals some damage. See I hit him once there. And then he goes away. Oh hello. You came up a different hole than I thought you would. 
Alright. You don't have to hit him with the arrows here. But I'm doing it because it makes the battle go by a little bit faster. Also, hitting him during this part here is really hard. Because you have to hit him in the head. Alright, I think he needs one more face shot with an arrow. That should do it. But now he's going to return back to his little hidey hole, so... This should be the last shot with the sword I need to kill him. hi -ya! There we go. And he's dead. Very easy, very simple boss, but he can be tricky if um, if you don't know how to dodge the rocks or... or nah, he's a pretty easy boss all around. So, temple number two completed, and his head burns and turns into a heart container. Let's go into the chamber of sages once again and see who the sage of fire is. Also, what happened to Darunia? Maybe he got eaten by Volvagia. Either way, let's find out. Whoa, that guy almost fell off the roof. Hooray, all the evil has been taken away. No more dark clouds, no more red ring of death. We've done good, I believe. We've done good. So Darunia was the Sage of Fire. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate what you did. I thank you on behalf of our entire Goron race. You turned out to be a real man, just as I thought you would. By the way, I, the wild Darunia, turned out to be the great Sage of Fire. Isn't that funny, brother? Well, this must be what they call destiny. Nothing has made me happier than helping you seal the evil here. Hey, brother, take this. This is a medallion that contains the power of the fire spirits and my friendship. And so with that, we got medallion number two. The Medallion of Fire. Or the Fire Medallion, for short. Drurini awakens as a sage and adds his power to yours. Don't forget, now you and I are true brothers. Wonderful. Now let's have a look. We have 10 gold skeletulas, which is perfect. So I'm going to quickly cut forward and, or er, cut, cut forward, cut back, and we are going to return to the Temple of Time. And we are going to return to Kakeriko Village as a kid. So, see you guys soon. Alright, we are back in Kakeriko Village as a child, and now the first house we want to go to is this one, just to my right here. This is the Skeletula House. House of Skeletula. In the middle, we have this creepy guy here. We look like this because of the spider's curse, but since you've destroyed ten spiders of the curse, the curse is starting to weaken. Did the kids, blah blah blah. So basically for every 10 Skeletulas you get up to 50. There are a bunch of cursed guys. This guy was a spider, but not anymore. Then we have one more, two more, three more, four more. So 
up to 50, each one of them will become human again. And then once you collect 100 gold skeletulas, this one will turn normal. So, because we cleared 10, we can talk to this guy. The curse has been broken, thank you. Here's a reward for you. And he gives you the adult's wallet. So, now we can hold up to 200 rupees. Please save my other brothers, will you do it? So, now we're going to leave, and now skeletulas aren't that big of a deal anymore. So, we can collect, carry 200 rupees. Now we are going to go back to Castle Town, because we, actually, show you, we can carry 100 rupees now. Now, we have some unfinished business to attend to in Castle Town. We are going to take a quick break from collecting the medallions and saving the world, because we have a bunch of things to do as Young Link now. So I just warped to the Temple of Time because it's faster than trekking all the way through Kakerika Village and Hyrule Field and when we're literally right next to the castle here. Okay, now if you remember, we sold the Keaton Mask to that guard and now it's time to go back to the Happy Mask Shop and talk to him. Oh great, you sold it. Please pay back 10 rupees for the Keaton Mask. Payment received. Now then, the Skull Mask, 20 rupees. Yes. Borrow the Skull Mask, wear it with C to show it off you feel like a monster while you wear this mask. Oh, you haven't sold the mask yet? Just have faith for a little while longer. Or do you want to trade it? I think I pressed the A button. No. Okay, so. Now we have to sell the Skull Mask. Now let's see, who wants the Skull Mask? Um, <laughs> that's a very good question. <laughs> Either way, we want to warp to the forest. Do dee dee, no no. Woo! And nobody even questions that we're disappearing in the middle of a forest. Hey, look at that. Sari is back. Sitting where she was when we left her. And she's no... Well, in the future, she's a sage, so she can't really do anything. Yeah, that's right. Nobody get away from Link. Alright, so we are just going to quickly leave the Lost Woods here, because it's the fastest way to go. I think the guy you give the Skull Kid mask to, or the Skull mask to, is in Kakeriko Village. I mean, not Kakeriko Village, uh, the Lost Woods. Okay, so coming back in here, if we put it on, because we need to talk to people with the mask on in order to do it, I believe this Skull Kid here wants the mask. So we just need to step up here. Nope, I guess he doesn't. Hmm. Okay, well, this Skull Kid, either way, there's something we have to do here anyway. Pull out your ocarina. You know Saria's song? We should be friends. Here, take this. And he gives us a heart piece. Collect four pieces total to get another heart container. More containers means more life. So that was number one out of four, but oh well. Oh, now we have to speak with him, now that we're friends. Hee hee, under that mask, aren't you that Kokiri kid? Quite an unusual mask you have there. Hee hee, I like it. It may make me look a little bit tougher. Hey, why don't you give it to me? Okay. Yowza, I'm gonna wear this all the time. He gave you 10 rupees for this 20 rupee mask. You lost money on that deal. Go back to the mask shop and pay 20 rupees for the mask. The difference will have to come out of your own pocket. What a jerk. But... 
but we sold another mask, so that's good and all. So time to return back to the happy mask salesman and get our claim. Alright, talking to the salesman again. Oh great, you sold it. Please pay me back 20 rupees for the skull mask. Right, payment received. So now we have another mask we can take. The spooky mask. A sad wooden mask. So, wear it with C, show it off. You can scare many people with this mask. Wonderful. So, the person who wants this mask is actually in the Kakeriko village graveyard. So, we are going to go there. So, I'll meet you guys... Alrighty, welcome to the Kakeriko Village Graveyard. Now, during the night, there's Dampy and he can't be here, but during the daytime, there's this kid who's kind of walking around the graveyard here. So if we talk to him, God, it's Dampy the Gravekeeper. Hmm? Oh, it's just a mask. I get a different kind of fright from that mask than I get from Dampy. Will you give that mask to me? Yes. With this mask, I'll be just like Dampy. Here's my money. You sold the 30 rupee mask to a kid for full price, and he didn't mind paying at all. Let's go back to the mask shop to pay 30 rupees for the mask. You can get the new mask model too. Wonderful. Now, that's what we would be doing if we were going to go ahead and do that. But first, we have some other business to attend to in Kakeriko Village. Now, if you remember, that guy in the windmill said some kids screwed up his windmill by playing a song, and we know that song because he taught it to us because some kid screwed it up. So let's go screw it up, completing the cycle. And of course the windmill is going really fast. Go around, go around, go around. What? It's going way too fast. And then we're going to hop off here. So what we have now is an empty well. And at the bottom of it, well, is something that I everyone's afraid of. So on the next episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Master Quest, we are going to be starting probably why my most hated memories of this game. I don't remember how to do this well, because like I said, I'm playing this game blind, but I do remember doing it, and I do remember it taking me a very, very, very long time. So, see you guys next time.